All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back. This is, of course, your broadcaster, HD StarCraft, and I'm here to bring you guys another StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm broadcast. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, we do have the Red Terran player. His name is Major Danger, and he is going to be spawning on Star Station. Over across the map, we do have his opponent. It is going to be the Blue Zerg player. His name is Cheticus. So it is going to be a Zerg versus Terran, and the main reason why I'm casting this game is because I have a serious lack of ZVT so far on my YouTube channel for Heart of the Swarm, and I'm told these two players are pretty high level, so uh, I'm pretty excited to see what's going to happen here. TVZ Star Station, and we already have a little bit of a talk here from the two players. By the way, this is from the latest patch, obviously. I always try to bring you guys the latest up-to-date games. Looks like Major Danger talking a little bit about the Oracle. And Chetikus, not too happy about the Oracle. I guess, uh, you know, as a Zerg player, it makes a lot of sense. The Oracle is not a friendly unit now for Zerg, given the, uh, the time warp fields are deadly effective, not to mention the uh, ability to laser down a hatchery so quickly. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess that's kind of been the main complaint so far from Zerg about Protoss. Major Danger showing him a little bit of his sympathy right there. I'm surprised he didn't place the Supply Depot closer to the edge of the ramp. Ended up placing it just in the middle of uh, his barracks and his command center. That's interesting. And Major Danger here saying they don't really use the Oracles against Terran. And that seems to make a lot of sense because, of course, Marines in the early game would just be able to shred those Oracles so quickly. Would not seem to be a very powerful unit at all. But against Zerg, absolutely. We've already seen White or use it quite a few times. Not to mention Champy as well. This Overlord is flying dangerously into Terran space here. That actually could go down if Chetikus is not careful. He, if he saw that, it, so, that, so, that SCV moving down the ramp, then the immediate response for most Zerg is to move the Overlord away. Otherwise, this Overlord could go down. At this point, Major Danger is probably just thinking to himself, ah, ha, 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 just keep talking to this guy and I'm going to get a free Overlord kill. But nope, that Overlord is actually going to be able to make it out of there. All right. And Major Danger not even going to give pursuit. So good timing right there from Chetikus just barely squeaking by and is not going to be taken down by the uh, Marine. And now it looks like the conversation has switched over to the Widow Mines. <laughs> yep, yeah, a lot of talk here from the, pr the players about the newest units available in HOTS. Widow Mines are a unit that is definitely very powerful against Zerg, and this is one another reason why I really want to cast this game because we don't really see uh, one. We for one, we don't see too much TVZ, and for two, I haven't really seen too much Widow Mine usage lately in Heart of the Swarm. So this should be pretty cool. Major danger right now, adding on a couple of refineries back over on the Zerg side of things. Chetikus has gas. Does not have Zergling speed yet. He has over a hundred gas already. And he's thrown down a Roach Warren. So at this point, it's most likely not going to be seeing any type of Zergling speed, but rather a Roach based attack from Chetikus. This is going to be completely un unknown for the Terran player unless he can get that SCV up into the main base. A lot rides on this SCV shoulders right now. Talk about pressure. And Major Danger doesn't even know about it. He is going to see. No, I don't think he saw the Roachorn. He saw it, but he didn't click on it. And now he will. And now Major Danger realizes that he might just be in some danger. Because what Zerg player gets a Roachorn this early on? And immediately back at home, the best idea here for him is throw up additional bunkers. Get. Actually, if he's got a factory coming, getting out some Widow Mines would not be a bad idea at all. Zerg will not have any detection at this point. And so the Widow Mines could be really effective against these Roaches, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get them out in time, guys. A second bunker coming up right now from Major Danger, and the conversation has been cut. Neither player is talking right now because they know that the game could end at any minute here as the Roaches are starting to make their way up to the front door of the Terran player. Jeticus here. Gonna try actually run by the main of uh, the supply depot wall has been raised up. There is an opening here, but the SCV makes a wall, just a temporary wall though, and those roaches are gonna pound their way through. Now a lot of these roaches have taken some damage from that bunker. They are gonna try to go for as many SCV kills as they can. One SCV or three SCVs have already gone down. The roaches are against Marines now. 
And those rushes were so weak already. Now it looks like more reinforcements are coming out. Widowmine burrowing down. Now Widowmine could take out a Roach. It will. And now Chetikus has got to figure out what he wants to go for. Try to be cost effective with these Roaches. Remember, this is a big cost for the Zerg player. He has hindered a lot of his drone income to go for this attack. And now he's starting to take out SCVs at the main base. Has already killed off nine workers in total. And it looks like finally all oh, these roaches are still taking out SCVs. And back inside the main base, those roaches are also just doing so much damage, preventing any SCVs from mining. Major danger here is in so much trouble. And it looks like these roaches are still alive inside the main base. This guy has four kills. This guy has nine kills. A nine kill, almost all of them being SCVs on a roach. Incredible. Finally, oh, a glorious death for that roach right there. Courtesy of the new death animations available in Heart of the Swarm. And finally, it looks like everything has been cleared at the front door as well. But talk about serious damage incurred from Major Danger, who says, Now I have to try to play greedily to catch back up. Look at him. 15 workers under 44. He's got to throw up a macro CC and try to squeeze his way back into this game. But it is going to be a hard-fought battle, man. He really has no income whatsoever. He's throwing up another command center. That is a double macro CC from Major Danger, who at this point is just gambling right now. He's just rolling the dice. This is like seeing someone in Vegas who's lost everything and decided at the very last minute to throw his house on the table. The mortgage for his house is on the table right now, and he's gambling all he's got. He's a desperate man right now. And will Major Danger be able to pull this off? It's four CCs in base right now. The only nearby detection for Chetikus to even sniff this out is this Overlord, but he has not gone inside to see. We even have double armory coming up from Major Danger, so really, really aggressive play here. Oh, those Zerglings. Oh, taking a brutal pounding from the Widow Mines. A couple of Zerglings were able to make it inside. I like how Major Danger asked... Did you expand behind your early aggression? And Chetikus has not even answered the question because if he did, it would actually give away some of his uh, advantage in this game because in fact, he has not expanded yet. And so when you look at it in view of that, and he just grabbed the hatchery right now, he's actually not as far ahead as you would have thought. Not to mention, he just threw away about 30 or 40 Zerglings right there, just running into a Widow Mines. And I believe he did see the double CC, so <laughs> as weird as this game has started off, it's even stranger to think that the Terran player, in fact, has more command centers than the Zerg player has hatcheries. There are four command centers right now for the Terran and only three hatcheries for the Zerg. Of course, the income shows a completely different story, 55 over 32, but this is going to be a very interesting game here as Major Danger starts to re revamp his economy. A stimulus, a global stimulus package has been instituted here for Major Danger and his Terran, uh, Terran uh, army. And now Chetikus is going to be going up for another hatchery, sending two Zerglings here, just being prudent to grab the Zononga Tower. We do have four sp Swarmos on the way, alright. And uh, Swarm Hosts are actually really good against Terran. You don't see them too much against Protoss because of all the long-range shenanigans that Protoss have, not to mention the Tempest. But against Terran, they can be extremely effective. Of course, Widow Mines are also a great way to countering Swarm Hosts as well. It's kind of like the infinite war, Swarm Hosts versus Widow Mines. What is stronger? Now... It does look like Chetikus has a few on the field. He's starting to get Groove Spines, Missile Attacks level 2, and Ground Carapace. So he, Groove Spines, it looks like he wants to go for Hydralisks. And indeed, we have three Hydras being produced right now. APM for both players pretty damn high. Units lost right now, favoring the Terran player ever so slightly. But uh, the Hydralisks from Chetikus, I just... I am not sure why you would make Hydras against Terran. And maybe part of it is because, maybe part of it is because, uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to make sense of this right now, and I don't know why you would ever make Hydras against Terran, even though, yes, Hydras do have a speed upgrade available at Hive Tech, but I still feel like ever since Brood War, they have just been a terrible unit against Terran, 
Unless Ateran was going mech in Brood War, like Vultures. But, uh, yeah, mech in StarCraft 2 is way different than mech in Brood War. Um, we'll see what happens, man. Chetikus is really trying to make a new strategy work here, and that's what Heart of the Swarm is all about. New game, new units, new strategies. Now, of course, Major Danger has no idea that there are Hydras and Roaches and Swarm Hosts just outside his front door, but momentarily he will find out. He only has a few Widow Mines and Tanks to hold this off. Now, luckily for him, Swarm Hosts like to clump up, so they are very vulnerable to Splash, but one of those mines could go down to Tank Friendly Fire. It is very close to dropping here at only 16 HP remaining. Major Danger would be wise to repair it or pull it out of the way of the Swarm Hosts. Chetikus has already backed out. Right now, he's just checking, the Terran player just checking for ninja hatcheries across the map. And it does look like we have another one coming up from Chetikus, but it's not really at a ninja location. This is Chetikus' fifth hatchery. And there's really not much that the Terran can do about it at this point in the game. Hive, Spire, Infestation Pit is done. You can see that Hive mode is about to finish here, and we are about to have... Tier 3 Zerg units on the way. Swarm host uh, looking like they want to position themselves so they can contain the Terran player. One thing I'm a little bit worried about right now for the Terran is he's still only really mining on two bases. He needs to expand to the third. And these Swarm hosts are going to make it very hard for Major Danger to do that. He's lost a tank already, taking some damage on the other tank. Meanwhile, these Hellions cleaned up by the Roaches and Hydras. Not looking good for Major Danger. The Zerg is approaching five bases, and he still hasn't claimed a third yet. Finally moving one of his CCs down. In fact, he made a new command center to move down here and did not lift off one of his orbitals. And I think the reason for that is he wants a planetary fortress here, not an orbital command. So he's going to leave the two orbitals inside the main base simply for um, macro CC purposes, simply for muling. Risky from Major Danger, but if he can pull this off, it might just work. He's going to have essentially six command centers. And, uh, you know, he's plenty. he's got plenty of SCVs. If anything, Chetikus is overmaxed on drones. 106 drones right now. We'll probably see him throw away some of his workers sooner or later. But he's got a huge Swarmos army now burrowed outside the Terran base. And Major Danger is going to lose at least one or two units here. Oh, that Thor barely survives, so maybe not going to lose a unit. And in this moment in time, it's it's always best for Terran to counter push once the Swarm Hosts have finished making their round. Try to kill off a couple Swarm Hosts, but Chetikus is not going to give him that opportunity. Pulls away after launching out another squad of, 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 of Locusts. And he is out of there. Very smart play. That's actually a pretty high micro intensive to let the swarm host spawn units and then pull out once the units have been spawned. Very, very good attention to detail. Major Danger coming in here with a couple of normal Hellions. That's not really going to do anything with Chetikus having more than enough defenses set up with those spine crawlers. You can see Major Danger has started Battle Hellion, or excuse me, Hellbat production. His upgrade sitting at 2-2. The Zerg army sitting at 2-2 himself. But the way for Zerg to break through a Terran army like this, Swarm Hosts, as good as they may be, you need to start making Broodlords. And we can see a lot of Corruptors are on the way. So soon we're going to see some Broodlords coming out. And hey, these Swarm Hosts still not doing too shabby of a job killing off a tank here or there. And that's essentially a free kill every single time. Now these Hellions, they probably did not want to see Broodlords morphing out. Major Danger is going to try to get as many drone kills as he can. But really, this is just helping the Zerg player free up supply. Dropping him down to 82 now. Five Broodlords are on the way at this moment in time. Major Danger moving out with more command centers. It's 20 minutes in, and we really haven't seen a massive battle yet. Some early aggression in the early game, but... I feel the tenseness in this game. I feel the tension. At any moment, all hell could break loose. You can see how both players have expanded vertically from where they once were, and they're both kind of taking their positions on the map. Uh, and both armies are damn near maxed right now, so this is going to come down to a couple of very epic battles, I would imagine. 
I cannot wait to see what happens here. 12 spine crawlers coming up somewhere on the map. Not too sure where. It looks like just in the middle to help with the fences. And here we go. Swarmo's starting to push their way through the middle, but there's so much tank firepower here. Once the Terran gets enough siege tanks, Swarmhost kind of become a moot point because the Terran could just blast them all down with superior tank firepower. But you can see just the raw number of locusts being spawned by Chedicus, allowing him to take out a Thor here, a Thor there, just getting really cost effective. We do have a couple of Blue Flame Hellions coming around the backside here and just camping on top of the cliff. Preventing the Zerg from mining at that location. More Swarm Hosts continuing to spawn out. Now, Major Danger, the best strategy is to push when the Locusts are on cooldown. But the problem is you can't do that because of the Brute Lords and Corruptors. Jedek has got to be careful, though. He's losing his Corruptors. Doesn't want to stay with Brute Lords against Vikings. Now, that's a lot of Swarm Hosts coming in. And Major Danger is going to lose a lot of tanks and Thors here. Critical loss as those Swarm Hosts are just eating them up for free. And who said there is no free lunch? Not when there's Swarm Hosts on the field. A couple of Hellions now running up to the north. They have been uh, doing a good job of harassing the Zerg economy. But what about the main Terran army? You can see Major Danger dropping in supply to 149 now. He just cannot stand the constant onslaught of Locust. It's just a non-stop barrage. And now converting his Hellions into Hellbats. And getting a little bit of a breather here because Chedicus's rally seems to be only set to this location. So a bit of a chance here for Major Danger to re regroup and rendezvous. But now Chedicus is, no, not paying attention to his Swarmos. He needs to send those in and continue to apply pressure to the Terran player. I'm not too sure why he isn't. Probably just a miss micro right now or mismanagement of his army. You know, one thing going still pretty good for Major Danger is, you know, even though he's lost a lot of his army, he has been able to remax very quickly. 191 supply now. You know, that one breather allowed by these swarm hosts where the rally were messed up allowed Major Danger to get a lot more tanks on the field. And now it looks like he might, just that one blunder by the Zerg player might have ended up costing the Zerg the ability to close out this game because Major Danger has a ton of expansions, a lot of production, and it looks like he's gotten enough siege tanks now to where it's become a stalemate against these swarm hosts. What is this guy doing? Somebody got to tell him that he was born into life as a swarm host, not as a locust. A couple of Hellions still being annoying behind the, uh, the drone lines here. But I will reiterate, one of the critical points in this game was when Major Danger was able to get enough tanks out on the field to make this a stalemate now. This is no man's land in the middle of the map. And it looks like Major Danger says, now's the time to push forward. He's going to leapfrog his way closer to the Swarm Host. He's gotta be careful though, that's a lot of Swarm Hosts coming out. The Hellbats and Hellades in the front trying to tank whatever they can. Now Viper's coming in and yanking in a Thor into enemy territory. Thor's like, where am I? these tanks though they are running out of fodder units in the front and if they don't have hellions or hellbats in the front the locust can do a lot of damage it looks like major dangerous with those plus three weapons on the tanks enough to shell out the locust before they get in close range and start to take out his siege tanks. Look at the minimap as well, guys. Major Danger has taken all the expansions on the top right-hand side. The Zerg player has taken almost all the expansions on the left-hand side. But it seems that the raw number of Swarm Hosts still enough. The Locust still enough to take out a tank here or there every time they cycle in new units. And here we go, more Vipers coming in. They're gonna yank all these tanks in! And the tanks are all in position for the Swarm Host to take them out. Major Danger losing about four or five tanks right there to a complete ambush. Those Vipers are getting really good now in this game. He's making more, four more Vipers, Chedicus is, as he realizes just how damn good Vipers are in this matchup. Now, consuming his... Uh, his spore crawlers because I guess he doesn't really need them, but he might change his mind there because now there are battle cruisers on the field. 27 minute game now, and this game is getting very, very epic indeed. We have four battle cruisers on the way. Swarm hosts have cleared out all the tanks, 
And now they can go for actual kills against the uh, buildings and SCVs. Because Chet uh, because Ma Major Danger has switched entirely. Well, all the Stormers just died at once. Um, Major Danger has switched entirely to an air-based army to counter the Storm Host, which is a very good idea. But there are Corruptors, there are swar there are Spore Crawlers, and he still has to, you know, kill off all these Swarm Hosts, which does he have enough Comsat to see the Swarm Hosts? I think he does, but he hasn't dropped the Comsat yet. So focused right now on killing off the Locust, which really shouldn't be his priority. And in a way, Chetakus is almost saying, go ahead, kill all my Swarm Hosts, because now you've got Battle Cruisers. I don't want Swarm Hosts anymore. I need air units. And so, yeah, he's just letting these Swarm Hosts die. And look at his bank. He's got 3.5k, 3.5k, just clearing out a bit right there with uh, so many Corruptors on the way. And yeah, it looks like while the Swarm Hosts are going down, just trying to kill off whatever he can. An epic sacrifice here from Jeticus, throwing away so many Swarm Hosts, but you can understand almost why he's doing that, because if the Terran continues to mount a Battlecruiser Viking army, you know, Locusts and Swarm Hosts are completely worthless against that. We also have Hellions now sacrificing themselves, because, hey, if there's no Swarm Hosts, well really, I don't need my Hellions or my Hellbats anymore. It's going to come down to massive Corruptor production right now. I would actually almost like to see Chetikus not consume the Spore Crawlers, but rather consume the Spine Crawlers, because he's probably going to need as many Spores as he can get. This is going to be extremely interesting, and I think uh, one of the strategies here we might see Chetikus employ is um, yanking in a Battlecruiser and then possibly... Mind controlling it? That could be possible. Or just yanking it into his a huge army of Corruptors and letting the Corruptors do the dirty work. Look at the production tab for the Terran as well. He's getting Corvid Reactor, Seeker Missile, Durable Materials, and Ship Weapons Level 3. He's adding on a million Command Centers. This game is out of control, ladies and gentlemen. It's going up to massive Sky Terran versus Sky Zerg here. Now, these sport crawlers really need to root themselves down. I don't know whoa, whoa, what Chetikus is doing. Gotta be careful there. That's a lot of Vikings yanking in a BC, and the BC goes down almost instantaneously. That is what Chetikus wants to do now. Just continuously yanking units. He's yanking them in. Oh, my God. So many BCs coming into the mix. Was that a little bit too much more than he could handle? The Infestors now coming in. They need to shoot out Infested Terrans. Oh, I can't even tell what's going on in this game. It's too epic for me to handle. I think his Corruptors are going to be able to take out all the units he yanked in. The Infestors have died as well. And now it's just left to Major Danger's Vikings, which it seems like he's got enough to win the air fight. Unbelievable. Absolutely epic fight right there. And I think what happened was Chetikus might have bit off a little bit more than he could have chewed. I think he should have taken his time, yanked in one unit at a time, and let his Corruptors slowly snipe out the Terran army. Um, rather than yanking everything in at once, which was a little bold, I think. I think he bit off more than he could chew, and I'm sure help it, having the, uh, the Spore Crawlers here would have been kind of handy too, uh, underneath his army. Unfortunately, he didn't bring it with his army and burrow him down in the creep, so... The Terran now has taken a lead in supply because that last battle certainly went in his favor. And of course, as Terran, you can use your SCVs to very quickly repair your, your army. So these Vikings are coming back up to full HP. And Chetikus has got to figure out what he's going to do now. The uh, He's still got 81 drones. I'm not too sure why his money isn't as high as it should be. Uh, it seems like now he's starting to Maynard some of his workers over to his new expansions. Um... Yeah, you know, there, there we go. Yeah, once this hatchery gets fully mining, he should be able to rebuild his army. But the Terran is banking now. Major Danger banking 2,500 minerals. Of course, he doesn't really have the gas to go with that like the Zerg does. So, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. Now, these Blue Flame Hellions are going in, and they can be pretty nasty if they can kill off some drones. Because Chetikus so desperately needs minerals right now. And these Hellions are just going to town taking out I don't even know how many drones there but really putting the Zerg under and now these Hellions continuing on their combat mission into enemy territory more S oh, I thought those were Hellions but no more SCVs coming and it uh, looks like these SCVs just want to go oh they're going to fight 
They're not! SCV is just going to kill them to die. Their commander, Major Danger, told them to go fight. And these guys are so brave. It looks like they might kill an Infestor. <laughs> oh my god. No, that Infestor will live. The Infestor's like, I'm much more expensive and costly than you are, SCV. I, there's no way I'm dying to an SCV. Shoots out of fungal growth. Now, uh-oh, Blue Flame Hellion's coming in. And that will require Tredicus to throw out a couple of fungal growths here unless he wants to lose more drones or, or Infestors. Wow, and Major Danger, so smart, just keeping the Zerg from being able to mine money right now. And still just harassing all over the place. He's sending in more SCVs, in fact. It's just a constant barrage of Tier 1 units. Major Danger with the SCVs, with minerals, drills in hand. Running into the Infested Terrans, though, so they are going to get killed off very quickly. And it's like he's just constantly sending out a wave. Of, uh, of Hellions just uh, looking to continuously harass the Zerg economy. And to be honest, every time he kills those drones, it forces uh, Chedicus to either remake drones or just hampers his economy overall. Good fungal right there on those Hellions. And if he can get another fungal, he should be able to finish these off. Oh, he's going to lose a few Infestors, though. Not good. And there's still a few Hellions alive, so forcing him to shoot out another Fungal Growth now has 10 Infestors on the way. And I'm just looking at the units tab. He still has his Vipers. It's like a Viper Infestor Corruptor army right now to deal with this. The, the, a massive squad of Viking Raven Battlecruiser. Will he have enough? He's still having to deal with these Hellions, which are constantly running through and harassing left and right. One thing, at least for Chedicus, is he's finally getting closer to max out. Almost max at 194 supply right now, but he just doesn't have a bank like the Terran player does. Just look at the Terran infrastructure. He's got a base here, base here, base here. Bases and buildings all over the place. It is radical right now. Insane. And uh, the Zerg, he's still sending out, the Major Danger, the Terran player is still sending out these Terran Hellion Strike Squads, which are keeping the Zerg quite occupied right now, and at the very least just forcing Fungal Gross out of the Terran player. Now, the reason why, you know, Major Danger can afford to throw away money for gas, for energy, is because he's got 4,000 minerals. So it really doesn't matter, and I think he's just clearing up supplies so he can make this type of army. And look at this. Oh my goodness. This is a- Oh! But the Vikings getting fungled! They were just all clumping up! Now Chedicus is gonna have to get the best fungals he's ever got in his entire life. Chain fungling those Vikings down! Then Raven shoots a Seeker missile out and takes out a huge clump of Infestors. These Infestors have got to get another good fungal off on these Ravens. Will Chedicus be able to do so or not? I don't know where his Vipers are now, shooting out Infested Terrans, and oh no, the Seeker missiles are tracked on! They're tracked on! And they're taking out more Infestors! And there's just too much Terran forces all over the place. Nero Parasite, the last desperate move from Chedicus. He just doesn't have enough. It looks like he was able to do a lot of damage to the Ravens and what and Vikings with some really good fungos. And now he's gonna come up with the Corruptors for cleanup duty, but there's auto turrets all over the place. And so Binding Cloud goes down on the auto turrets to shut them down. And now will there be enough Corruptors for Chedicus to clean through the BCs? He's used Corruption on the Battlecruiser so they take 20% additional damage. This game is insane! Chedicus is going to be able to take out the BCs with his Corruptors and he wins the fight! Chedicus wins this fight. He also cleaned up some Hellions in the north. Unbelievable game! Well, I guess he hasn't won the fight yet, but really, there's only a Battlecruiser and a few Vikings left. And now Hydras are coming out. We saw the Hydras uh, earlier on in this game. Mind controlling a BC. And that BC is going to go down. So this game, all of a sudden, with that last final battle, has com been completely flipped upside down. We can see the Zerg has taken the lead supply-wise right now. And in fact, he's not starved for minerals anymore, but starved for gas. The Terran player has a decent bank to work with though, but he can't afford to throw away Hellions anymore like he was earlier on unless he can get some drone kills, which he's going for right now at the neutral expansion. He is going to be able to take out quite a few drones, putting the Zerg down to 67, but you can see now at this point, 
Major Danger doesn't have that many SCVs. Of course, he threw away a ton of them, but that's okay. Reason being, he doesn't really have that many expansions left, and as Terran, you can solely rely on mules almost forever. So he's just going to mule his way back up into this game. Despite having a lack of SCVs, he's making six battlecruisers right now as well. Still continuing with that battlecruiser production. One orbital command looking to become a, a base right here, but there's already a hatchery there. So uh, we have a real estate fight right now. These Hellions are going to look to probably clear that up, or perhaps they're just not even going to care. And they're going to go for more drone kills here. Comsat going down. One thing I'm a little bit worried about right now for Chetikus is he's making a lot of Hydras. And I don't know if he's going to have enough to deal with the Battlecruisers. He needs to remake more Corruptors, not focus so much on Hydras. Now, looks like he will be able to clean up those Hellions, but still losing a lot right there of drones and losing a couple of Hydras there. As Hydras are considered light units, they, they do take that additional damage. And look at Major Danger's army once again, almost maxed. Massive Viking Battlecruiser army and... Uh, we can see Chetikus is just relying solely on Hydralisks. I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Hydras versus Battlecruisers. It's kind of an interesting scenario. You don't see it every day, but they're not too shabby. But when you you also add in Ravens and Seeker Missiles, it all of a sudden becomes a much more disastrous, disastrous proposal. Plus, not to mention Ravens can throw out a PDD, and that also shuts down Hydralisks as well. So... I, I do think Chetikis could be in some trouble right here. He sees his Terran army and he's got to be thinking right now, there is no way I can combat that with the units that I have out on the field right now. I'm going to need more, I, I'm going to need better micro, more units than I have ever had before in this game. Will he be able to muster it? Hellion now with Blue Flame going in, preventing the Zerg from making any money at the 12 o'clock expansion. Oh my god, drones galore! It's Christmas time, baby! And Major Danger could just roast all these up. He finally realizes that he's hit the jackpot. And that is Super Lotto plus 20 million right there. Gets the money, gets the kills. And he's gonna go for the bonus round. And uh, looks like he'll get a couple more drone kills at that. So very nice job. What are these spore crawlers doing? Just waltzing, waddling their way off creep. And uh, the BCs could actually take them out right now, but it looks like he's not going to do so. Chetikus getting a fungal off, desperately trying to get the spores back on creep so he can plant them down. He needs to plant these spores down. Every little bit is going to count here against this oh-so-scary Terran army of BCs at 3-3, which have just finished Yamato Cannon as well. Oh my goodness. This could just be a Zerg slaughter. And, you know, that last epic battle, I didn't think Chetikus could come back and win, but he did. But I don't know if he's going to be able to do it this time. It's going to take more than he's ever had before, yanking in a Raven and mind-controlling it to throw out a Seeker missile. Wow. That was pretty sick micro, but uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough because the Yamatos are coming out. It's Revenge of the Battlecruisers. They're pissed off. And I think Chetikus is probably going to have to tap out at this point. This army is just way too strong. You can hear the just epic overload of energy from the battlecruisers every time they want a Yamato. It's just a disaster. Whatever they strike, here comes some ravens being mind controlled. But it's just a very... It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter what you do at this point. Good fungal, though, but I don't think he's going to have enough to clean up. Despite an epic stand by the Zerg player, he almost made it. But the Terran with the Sky Terran in the late game, I think it's going to be able to crush through here and momentarily going to force the GG. But there it is. GG well played. A 47-minute game and, dare I say, probably the most epic Heart of the Swarm game that I have casted as of this far the great zerg versus terran exactly what i wanted to see when uh when i wanted to do another zvt because i haven't done any in a long time for heart of the swarm so i hope you guys enjoyed that if you did check me out on my facebook youtube and twitter at hd starcraft and one last thing i will have a giveaway tomorrow now that's just going to be the details i'm going to make a video about the details on how you guys can compete to get a shot at winning in the giveaway so make sure you guys stay tuned tomorrow to my youtube channel to find out and this is of course hd starcraft and i am signing out